Well, hi everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Photoshop User TV. It is episode 379. 379. God, we're almost at 400 episodes, that's crazy. Mm. Anyway, my name is Matt Kaliskowski, and I am joined here today by Mr. Corey Barker. How's Hello. it going, Corey? I'm good, how are you? I'm doing you good. You have not been on the show in a while. Have I you? haven't been on the show in a while. Why don't you, you guys like me anymore? We don't like you. You went Lightroom on us. I know, I went Lightroom. <laughs> Can Light you bring me more Lightroom on the I want to change the show to Lightroom <laughs> User TV, so. But you've been out on the tour and stuff too as well, haven't Yeah, you? I've been traveling a lot and doing all kinds of stuff, so. Mm. But I got a couple, uh, I, got, I, got a, I got a little bit of a break from seminar tour stops this summer, mm. so. Mm. I, and I've got hopefully. one revving up here soon. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah, see, I'm gonna, see, I'm gonna take, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take your place. Now. Oh, yep, so. we're switching over, it's time to, uh, Tag in, so. All right, so. Uh, guys, we got a great show. Corey's gonna kick us off here. I'll give you a, a quick preview of one of our prizes. It is called Exposure from Snapshots to Great Shots by uh, one of my very good friends, Jeff Ravel. So he's wrote kind of like the book on exposure. So definitely a good book. We'll tell you how to win that at the end of the show. I didn't get to do my whip yet. Oh, do the whip, okay. okay. Brought to you by <laughs> Photoshop User Magazine and the folks over at KelbyOne.com. A lot of great stuff in this issue. That was a cool yeah. issue. That, yeah. So they tell you how to create that cover. Yeah. Um, that's Mark Johnson. Yeah, Mark Johnson did this uh, feature story in here. Great compositing work. So uh, be, watch, be sure to check that out as awesome. well. So. All right, man. What do you got for us? I got a real quick thing. Actually, I was uh, I was at Best Buy last week, um, which is odd. You realize how long you've been to it in the tech store until you actually go to one? I was walking yeah. around Best Buy. It was a, de it was a wasteland for one. Um, really? There nobody there. It was like, um, it was Friday. Hmm. And there was nobody there. But I'm walking around and I saw this stand of these like old movies but there were the way the, the package design on these was really really cool they did this kind of um design on white with a little bit of color effect and everything like that and i said i have to try that out so just kind of do a real quick um version of it and it kind of leads to another interesting technique is using refine edge when you want to extract a subject on a dark background in photoshop and what i've discovered actually is um so i've got this guy here and he's kind of standing against the dark background and Looks like it might be standing up pretty well, but what I've discovered is if you go and add a levels adjustment layer, now don't run a levels adjustment directly to the image, but rather run a levels adjustment and just brighten it up so you can see more of the subject like that. Even, mm -hmm. I mean, you're gonna even do it more than you normally would. This is obviously way too bright and I would never adjust it this way, but I'm not thinking that way. I'm thinking about extracting. So I'm gonna go and grab the quick selection tool and then just draw over my subject. And now it's, since those edges are a little bit more clearly defined, Refine Edge or the um, the quick selection yeah, tool does a much more. It, it does a much better job of picking up those edges. That's a good and tip. notice, also, I'm still highlighted on the adjustment layer, yet it is still reading the subject itself. You don't have to have be selected on the layer itself in this case. Um, you just go ahead and drag on there and actually selects it. So obviously, got a little area in here. So I'm just going to option click and drag between the legs there and just get rid of that area. And that looks pretty good. And I really don't need his whole body. I'm just really kind of worried about getting the upper area, but we'll go ahead and just get this nice and cleaned up here. So a oh, little area in the sleeve there. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and click on Refine Edge now. And it didn't do anything, you know why? Because I'm still selecting <laughs> on the adjustment layer. That, you did that so they, they could see the potential downfalls. Yes, exactly. That's a gotcha that will, that will so be, if, it's, if you go into that Refine Edge and that that layer is still I mean, selected. Basically, just turn that layer off at this point. Yeah, so it's just like, uh, all right, nothing going. So since my selection is now done, I can just go ahead and throw that adjustment layer away at this point. Now I'll go to Refine Edge, and I can just see where I need to make any adjustments to the edge there. There's a little bit there. There, and then get around the sleeve here. I'm not really worried about that because I'm not using that area, but... Uh, let's bump up the edge detection radius here a little bit. So go ahead and click OK. So now I've got a nice clean selection on my guy here. I'm going to go ahead and make a new document. And I was actually doing this thinking, you know, I might use it as a, as a good Facebook header image. It seems to be popular. A lot of people doing their cool designs mm -hmm. with their, their Facebook headers. So this is roughly that format. So I'm going to go ahead and bring that image over. So I just drag and drop over. And I'm holding down the Shift key so it lands in the center. And we'll just drag this down a little bit here. And look, even cropped in, it's like, he's really dramatic. It's yeah. kind of cool. So I'm just going to move him over to the side. It even now, looks good on a white background. It, it already looks good, but I want to take it that extra step further like I saw in that display. I'm going to actually remove the color. So I'm just doing Shift-Command-U, and that uh, desaturates the image. And then I'm going to do a levels adjustment directly on the image. And this time I'm just really going to kind of blow out the highlights. I'm going to lighten it overall and then push the highlights in to really kind of make it brighter there, something like that. 
I don't want to do it too much because then you're just going to lose a whole lot of. So you get something like that. Then I'm going to add a new layer on top of that. And this is a cool trick I actually learned from, uh, from Tomasz Opozinski, who's a movie poster designer. Doing, using simple gradients to create this kind of atmospheric effect, I'm just going to draw, draw a little radial gradient off to the side here. Of course, not in black, but rather in white. There we go. And notice how it gives me that kind of little atmospheric air to it, you know, kind of cool. Mm -hmm. But then I'm going to take it a step further. And this is what I thought about was, that was really cool about those designs I saw is they, they were in black and white, but they had subtle color effects by merely going and using a gradient and doing something like this color here. I was trying to drag that out. Now, obviously, it looks bad like that, but the moment I change that blend mode of that layer to soft light, then we get a nice little subtle that, yeah. side light effect going on in our guy on the other side. That's pretty here. cool. So, and if I do another one here, I'll do another layer, and let's do more of a blue color coming off from this side. And then again, I'm going to do soft light, and it adds a little bit of coolness to it. It's that like area. a gelled. Yeah, exactly. It's like you're gelling the flash mm -hmm. after the fact. Precisely. Which I, I've actually never seen done well until just mm -hmm. now. Now, another trick here is if I wanted to blow out highlights of him a little bit more without using a direct gradient, select the layer containing the subject. Using the gradient, I'm going to set the gradient or the foreground color to white. Set the blend mode of the tool, not the layer, but rather the tool itself to overlay. And I can go out here and blow out some more highlights along this edge here. Notice how it's keeping the darker detail, mm -hmm. but blowing out the lighter areas much more so. So we can get that really kind of bright um, light effect going on in there. That overlay. But, but over, ultimately, there we have it. This is kind of an interesting little take on just simple extraction and doing this kind of like, you know, on white design like that. Like that, isn't that kind of cool? Dude, this freaking guy. Seriously, like yeah. I've, I've never seen, I've never seen the after the fact gelled mm. flash look done well until, yeah. until just now. And so. it wasn't until I saw uh, that guy Tomas do that trick and I started experimenting with just simple gradients and blend modes. You can actually achieve some really interesting lighting effects just doing that. So. Awesome, man. Yep. Great tutorial. Thanks. All right, guys, we are, uh, we're gonna take a very quick break when we go back, uh, talk about our contest and uh, got a little Lightroom stuff for you. We'll see you back here in just a minute. All right. <laughs> Well, hi everyone. We are back. I'm Corey Barker, and I'm joined today with Mr. Matt Kleskowski, who's going to show us some cool Lightroom stuff. I see Lightroom mobile things happening very soon. But uh, first, I want to talk about right. um, KelbyOne.com. We've got a lot of great things going on over there at Kelby One, don't we? Yeah. yeah. There. Uh, so, so in case you guys didn't know, Kelby One actually pays for this show because it's a free show for you guys to watch. So, mm. um, so we're very, very thankful to them, and uh, we hope you can be as well by just going to check out the website. Uh, it's basically online training. Online training is uh, is is mainly what we do there. Uh, you'll see all the latest classes. We put out a new class. It's every, every Thursday. Thursday. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, photography, Photoshop, Lightroom, video. Business inspirational. Business. It's a great interview series by our own Mia McCormick, who's interviewed some of the greatest photographers that we've had. Yeah. Uh, come and she, by the way, so if you, if you are a Kelby One subscriber, so Mia is starting a brand new series on, um, I forget her exact name, but it's basically on pioneering women in photography. Yeah, it's a great series. So, uh, mm -hmm. so she's already got like five or six interviews lined up, and uh, it's going to be a great little series there. So anyway, um, all right, so let's talk about Lightroom Mobile. So this is really our first show back. Lightroom Mobile uh, got announced at Photoshop World. So it was probably mm -hmm. almost a couple of months ago. Yeah. God, it's a long time. Anyway, uh, so Lightroom Mobile, basically it's an app on your iPad. Only on the iPad right now. They're working on, on other devices and whatnot. But right now it's only on your iPad. And, and what it's meant to do is it's really meant as a place for you and I think this is the hardest part about it is kind of kind of telling telling what person it's meant for. It's meant for the person that uploads a bunch of photos to their laptop because it's really meant to initiate from your laptop. Right. All right. You're not supposed to initiate from the iPad. You're not supposed to dump all your your whole photo shoot on the iPad and do all that. You're meant to in initiate from the uh, from the laptop. So you got your laptop or desktop. You upload a bunch of photos, and then you want to take that 
mobile with you. All right, you want you want to a be able to maybe look through those photos and pick mm -hmm. out the favorites. And then also maybe you want to have all your keepers and all your favorites with you so that if you want to show somebody, if you ever need to get access to them, you have a quick way to do it. So once you install, it's a free update to Lightroom 5. So you got to have Lightroom 5 and you also have to be on the Creative Cloud. Once you, uh, once you install Lightroom 5.4, you're going to see this little area up at the top. See, it's got my name here. If you click on there, you'll be able to sign into your Lightroom mobile account. Once you do that, the way it works is it goes with collections. You create a collection inside a Lightroom, and then there's a new little toggle switch all the way over on the left-hand side of that collection that means it's, it's kind of got like little arrows. Mm -hmm. that go. So that means you want to sync it. Even if you right-click over there, you can even see sync with mm -hmm. Lightroom Mobile. Mm -hmm. All right. So that means you want to sync it with Lightroom Mobile. So once you do that, then you're going to hop over onto your iPad. And when I get over to my iPad, you can see there's that Colorado collection that I synced with Lightroom Mobile. All right, so I'm going to tap on it, and then it's going to show you everything that's inside of it. Okay, so I'm just I'm basically just swiping up and down. All right, if you want to see a photo, just tap on it, and that'll show you the photo. And then at the bottom, you'll see a few different icons on there. So the first icon is just going to show you your film strip, so you could swipe through if you wanted to see other photos in there. The next icon is probably the one that's going to get used the most. Uh, that is the icon that opens up develop settings. Think of this. It's not the full version of Lightroom. All right. It's just going to be your basic panel. So as you go through here, let's go to, you can see I can tap on exposure and I can swipe left and right. Uh, let's go over to saturation here. I'll go over to saturation and I'll bring that all the way down. So basically we just converted it to black and white. And then maybe I'll go to clarity and crank up my clarity a little bit here. All right. And I can go back. Now, I don't have to do anything about syncing. Uh, Lightroom Mobile is taking care of that all for me behind the scenes. I can go back to my collection here. You can see I have a couple other collections you can swipe up and down. Um, the other thing is, is as you're going through your photos, we talked about being, being mobile. Mm -hmm. with this, you know, wanting to, wanting to look at your photos. So one of the things that you can do is if you swipe up, that rates it as a pick. If you swipe down, reject. So swipe up, pick, swipe down, reject. And all these things get put back over into Lightroom as well. They get synced back. So I just, just go over to the next photo, swipe up, pick, swipe down, reject. I can do some quick edits if I wanted to. I want to show you a neat little trick here. Um, let me go to exposure. I'm just going to crank up the exposure. I normally, I'd never <coughs> want to make this photo that bright, but I do want to show you that if you hold down two fingers, maybe three. There we go. Oh wow! I thought it was two. So three fingers. If you hold down three fingers and jump on one foot, it'll show you your before and after. So if you just tap it. With your three fingers, that'll show you your before. Say the magic chant. And then you pick your fingers <laughs> up, and that'll show you the after. So there's a lot of little things on there yeah. that, uh, that as you, mm -hmm. you kind of go through the app, um, and there's, it gives you little hints and, and I'm whatnot. A I have a quick question, though. Like, is it designed to be a companion app, or can, I, can you close your laptop and take off and continue to do what you were doing on, on the, the mobile app? Um, it, it's designed to, to be yeah, to a companion to Lightroom on your, your desktop okay. or your okay. laptop. Mm -hmm. So it, again, remember, it's meant to initiate from here. Right. Okay. You're, you're going to start your photo organization here. Mm -hmm. Then you want to take it mobile. I want to do my pics and my rejects. I want to mm -hmm. do some basic editing mobile, and I want to have that with okay. me. Then you can. And as you do all that, see, I just went back over into, into my desktop over those, here. Yeah. Look, there's the photo that we converted to black and white. All right, so it's syncing both ways. All the and time. then if you look down here in my film strip, that was the photo. See how it's grayed out because we rejected it. Mm -hmm. That was the photo that we okay. rejected over on Lightroom Mobile. So it takes care of that for you. So yeah. uh, once it connects, you don't have to worry about it. It all keeps that that's synced. Great. That's great. That so pretty cool there. stuff. I like it. It's uh, in version one. It's interesting. I mean, think like that's base version. Think it work wow. and go. Getting along nicely. All right. All right. Where are we at, Corey? We have. Let's uh, let's talk a little bit about Photoshop World. We talked about. We just talked about Atlanta uh, just about a couple months ago. We did Atlanta for the first time. It was a great show. Of course, we've got. Las Vegas. Coming again. up. Coming up. It's uh, September 3rd through the 5th. I love the new uh, website. <laughs> the new website is fantastic. If you have not seen it as of yet, it just launched uh, Friday, I believe. Yeah. Um, go to photoshopworld.com and check it out. There's a whole new 
site with all new information and all new graphics and everything like that. It's a lot of great information in there. So once again, September 3rd through the 5th, and we got everybody there. We've got, we've got a handful of new people coming Yeah, Tim Wallace, time. the yeah. automotive photographer, mm -hmm. is going to be there. Um, mm -hmm. We're Roberto over. Valenzuela, an awesome wedding photographer. He's he's killing it in the in the book world right now. He's got a couple of really popular mm -hmm. books, so I'm excited. I, I met Roberto once before, and he was a he was a blast to be with. So I'm excited he's going to be there. As and well. if you've been so. the Photoshop World in Las Vegas, you it is a blast. We have such a great time out there. It's really a lot of fun. So be sure to check that out. And of course, all of us will be there as well. The yep. Photoshop guys and Scott and everybody will be there as well so be sure to check that out all right uh on the seminar front if you're uh if you're interested in catching us out on the road i mentioned earlier you're not going to catch me out on the road this summer mm -hmm. but you will be able to catch Corey with his brand new tour mm -hmm. and uh and a whole bunch of other tours as well just go to kelby1.com slash live and you can see all the uh the seminar dates and what cities they're coming to there mm -hmm. and finally we have a deal of the week so, Peach Pit, e Peach yes. Pit, which is the, the publisher that we write uh, all of our books with. Mm -hmm. uh, each week they give us a discount to, to pass on to you guys. So this one is a book called Lighting Fundamentals for Photographers, Learn by Video. And uh, there's a 40% discount, which brings it down to $38.99. So uh, just use the code. Corey, what's that code? That's a very long code, I can see. It's just, it. Now, you'll, you'll go to peachfit.com slash Kelby1 and enter the code <coughs> Kelby1 to get a fantastic price on that ebook by Joe Levine, I believe the name of the author was. So uh, Cool. And a book that you do not have to pay money for, Exposure. Giving it away. From Mr. Jeff Ravel. We're giving it away. Uh, all you got to do is go to our contest website, leave us a comment, leave us your email address, leave us your name, and uh, tell us if you want to win. So we're going to give away a copy of the book. We will also give away a ticket to any of the seminars. So just say whatever seminar that you want to win a ticket to, leave the location, and, uh, and you'll get it. Any seminar anywhere contest. in the world. No, no, just our seminars. <laughs> it's just our seminars. <laughs> just yes. our seminars. So uh, I believe that wraps it. Does that wrap it up? That wraps it up. Does wrap it up. It's for, good to be back. Yes. Thanks for having we're, me back. Thanks for having me back. And if uh, I think we're next episode, we're gonna have RC back as well. Holy crap! So we're getting the gang back together. I'm telling season. you, man. I'm, you're gonna be away this summer. The show's gonna be all. We're gonna it's rename gonna, it to Lightroom User TV. It is going to be an interesting summer to see what happens so far. <laughs> Thank all you guys right. for joining us once again. Thank you, Matt, for taking time no out, problem. coming and joining us, showing us some new Lightroom stuff. We will see you guys next time right here on Photoshop User TV. Bye bye. Take care, everybody.